with that wants to know, if you were still making Mythbusters today, are there any YouTube channels you would want to bring on for a collaboration or guest star? Yeah, all the channels that I talk to and collaborate with and, and communicate with and, and admire. I mean, I'd bring in, you know, I'd bring in Kyle Hill, uh, Joe Pazinski, this old Tony, uh, uh, Tony Swatton, uh, Jorvan, uh, uh, Ajay, uh, a new friend of Tested, a brilliant young maker. Um, Stefan Gatzaviner, uh, to make us all feel a little bit less than in our uh, chasing of the zeros in precision metrology of machine work. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. That was one of the most fun parts about making the show was bringing in collaborators that you wanted to work with. I mean, in my very first season, I got to, I, I convinced Ricky Jay to come up and have a playing card showdown with me. And I stood at 20 paces and looked into the magnificently dead eyes of Ricky Jay, because when he's performing, man, he's just going to give you the whole thing. Uh, and then we threw playing cards at each other and he handily dispatched me. But most important, I uh, that day I got to work with one of my heroes and I actually met uh, somebody who's still one of my closest friends, Michael Weber. Um, so bonus all around. Yeah, uh, no end to the collaborators we'd be looking for. Um, your story about being comfortable, uh, sorry, the creator Matt has a question. The story about you being comfortable in your Neo costume on set is very inspiring. Is there anything that you really wanted to cosplay or theme the show around that you didn't get the chance to or weren't at liberty to use? Um, so to just briefly tell the story that the creator Matt is referring to, uh, one of my earliest experiences of cosplay is uh, doing an episode in which we're wondering if the hero who always jumps off a fire escape into a dumpster to get away from the bad guys, how safe is it to jump into a random dumpster? Uh, and so we went to the dump, we looked at various random dumpsters. Of course, the first dumpster we like inspected was full of medical waste. That was a problem. Um, and then we got taught by stuntman Randy Lamb how to jump off buildings from 25 feet off the ground, which is an adrenaline rush like no other. It made me physically ill. I did it for days. It's awful. It's awful. Oh my God. Stunt people are my absolute hero. Um, However, I knew in this episode that we'd be having this progression of Jamie and I inspecting dumpsters, then we would learn how to jump off buildings into dumpsters, then we would fill some dumpsters full of safe stuff and see about jumping into them. And I knew for the finale, I wanted like a shift in the visual. I just thought, let's make it clear at what part of the episode we're in. So for the first half of the episode, we wore training suits, track suits that said stunt trainee on the back. And for the second half, I thought I should wear a costume. So I put together a very not respectable, not very accurate Neo costume. It was basically a long black raincoat, some, uh, some knee-high boots with tons of buckles on them, the correct sunglasses, the correct beefy T-shirt, and the correct harness, climbing harness. And I, I walked out of my car on the day we're shooting this finale, and my, I, I was confronted by my crew. Who, you know, when you work with people, they know you better than anybody. My Mythbusters crew knew me intimately, as does the Tested crew. They know all sorts of deep things about my makeup simply because we're living in each other's pockets. And my crew saw me, and they could tell just how into it I was to be dressed like Neo and how not like Neo I looked. Right? Like the, the, the gulf between how good I felt and how good I looked was quite wide. And they were enjoying some church giggles. So I came out from around my land cruiser and they were like, <laughs> they were laughing. And I felt a little shame right away, like anyone would. And then I thought to myself, these people love you. Don't have to worry about them. They're not judging you. They're just, they're just laughing because they know you. And I knew as a producer, the shot of that coat flying behind me when I jumped off the building, it's going to look beautiful. And it totally did, reader. It was the right call. Um, and it was a, that was an interesting shift for me. Because putting on a costume, look, doing anything that kind of moves you, it makes you vulnerable. Any, any experience you have that you find kind of overwhelming in a way you want again, that's, that's a place in which you are revealing things about yourself, to you, to yourself, um, or to the others that you're working with. 
Uh, and that was a, a pivotal key moment for me in cosplay of like learning what to take in and what to filter out. Um, and I went on to wear, wear a whole bunch of other costumes. I dressed as Indy for two weeks for our Indiana Jones episode. I wore a spacesuit a couple different times. Um, never did get around to getting some Abyss helmet and backpacks to do underwater stuff, but I did really want to do that. Um, you know, the biggest issue about cosplaying for the show was we couldn't do anybody else's IP, really. Um, so we were relegated to kind of doing like generic superheroes and generic supervillains. And I, I definitely did one supervillain where I wore a white lab coat and I had a scar on my eye and I had a white contact lens in it. It looked really neat. That's definitely something I wanted to do more of and never got a chance to. But for the most part, I do feel like the show allowed me uh, to fulfill some cosplay goodness. And here's the other thing about cosplay is that when you wear a costume for a period of time, it like you're fulfilling its purpose. So each time I would wear a costume on set and it gets its, you know, I learn how to make it move and how to work with it, and put it on and take it off, et cetera. It becomes more a part of me. Um, this is, you know, it's basically like one of my axioms is the costume's not done when I finish building it. It's done when I wear it. It has to fulfill its purpose for it to move on to the next stage of its development. Yep, and stuff you build does develop even after you're done with it. It changes over time. It tells you different things about yourself. Our early create, this is also, I, I'm going off on a tangent here, but this is also why, why for all the makers out there watching, and again, making is coding, making is writing, making is sewing, making is editing, making is making tables or dresses. It's all of these things. Document your work, take pictures of everything, take notes on everything. Because what you learn when you go back and look at that stuff is unparalleled, truly. I, and, and, you know, I grew up as the son of an artist, so my father had lots of slides. He took slides of everything. I grew up watching that be part of his artistic process. Finish a painting, set it up, take a bunch of slides. So you had them in the slide, in the slide, in, in, you know, you had a record of them in the archive. Um, but yeah, not, it's not just a good idea for your reference points, but looking at old work really does teach you interesting things about your state of mind at that time. We're getting some questions in that are live. Um, Elizabeth Poucher asks, what myth do you wish you had taken further? Um, I had so much fun water skiing behind an excavator. I wanted to do more of that. But boy, was it getting hairy. Uh, this is a weird one in which I have an answer for Jamie because I think I know what episode he would have really wanted to continue on because he complained about it bitterly on the day. Um, and it was uh, Square Wheel's Smooth Ride. Um, Jamie, uh, and Jamie had this idea and we built it into an episode because he was interested in it, which frankly is totally good reason for making content. Uh, he designed and built these intense square wheels. Uh, he, uh, we went out to the uh, Alameda landfill, out, Altamont landfill, out there by uh, uh, the way out there, way east of San Francisco. Um, it's a terrific place. We filmed a lot of episodes there. Uh, and one of the benefits of the landfill was that we were able to dig things and we were able to change topography of the land. And it, it is very difficult to get anyone to give you permission to take to adjust the topography of land. Even digging a hole in a lawn is actually a really quite difficult thing to get a permit to do if you're filming. Um, so Altamont Land is a terrific location. And um, we were thinking about, so one of Jamie's suppositions about the square wheels was that, was that there was a speed at which you'd get a smooth ride. But even more than that, he thought that they might be a better tire for driving through sand or climbing an incline of sandy material. Uh, and so he chose a specific incline and that was the one we uh, worked with the insurance company to double check and like everyone was cool with it. Nick Plache, our stunt coordinator. And the, the truck didn't do very well. The square wheels didn't do, I think they did just a tiny bit better than the SUV that we had that was the same weight. Um, and Jamie wanted to shift and try different uh, grades of hells, but unfortunately, we only had one day to film this on location, and we didn't. We hadn't gotten any insurance approval for any of the other for for other uh, grades to climb. He wanted to. I think he wanted to climb an even steeper one. At any rate, 
I know that Jamie was pretty salty at the end of that day. I would wager if you asked him uh, and he told you the truth, he would say, yeah, he'd love to revisit Square Wheels Smooth Ride. I think there's a YouTube channel that did it recently. It's like two years ago, three years ago. Anyway, I can't remember many details about it. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are, of course, below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects, questions, you get to ask direct questions during my live streams, and we have some members only videos, including the Adam real time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.